Hello, friends. Good evening. This is Pradeep uh, from Tech and Training Corporate Solutions. Welcome for 15 days webinar series. This is fifth day, and today we are going to talk about Outlook. Yesterday we have uh, discussed about OneNote, which was very well received, and I must thank you for all your lovely feedbacks. So once again, before I begin, uh, let me request all of you to donate some amount to PM Care or to any other charity organization of your choice. Here, the organization doesn't matter, but act of kindness does. So please do make donations. This is the entire schedule of uh, this 15 day webinar series. As we are on fifth day, we are doing Outlook and uh, tomorrow is again a very important thing, which is nothing but collaboration. In collaboration, we are going to talk about how do we work OneDrive, SharePoint, Forms, Power Apps, Teams, Planner, OneNote, Outlook, all together. Yeah, so that's called as collaboration because most of the time people find themselves in a com confusing position, which app should be used when. So tomorrow is going to be the answer to all these questions. Do join us tomorrow as well, and uh, this is our 15 day webinar YouTube URL where you can see all the previous recordings. At times we may uh, delay a little bit to upload the recordings, but every day you will find new recordings over here. So just in case if you have not, if you have not been the part of any of the previous day training program, you can go to this URL, which is nothing but this will redirect you to youtube.com to get connected to our YouTube playlist. This is a brief information about me. While you're going through this information, I will appreciate and request you to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to my channel. Do press the bell icon and if you like any video, don't hesitate to comment or share the video. I will highly appreciate if you guys connect to me on LinkedIn or leave a positive note on my LinkedIn, positive or negative, whatever you feel like you, you're free to uh, express it over there. Just in case if you did not like any session, you may express it over there as well. But uh, just in case if I don't answer any question during this webinar, you can always come to our YouTube channel and go to that respective day's YouTube video and post your queries over there. I'll be waiting to answer your questions on YouTube. Other things I will definitely be answer, try to answer your question, but because we have got huge number of participants and we are bombarded with a lot of questions, my colleague Prashant is continuously uh, trying to answer each and every question. But just in case if uh, you don't get the answer to your question, question by Prashant, I'll try to make an attempt to answer most of the questions. But if we still uh, miss out, then once again, I'll request you to come to our YouTube channel. Yeah, so uh, this was about my introduction. OK. Now I go ahead and uh, give you some information about this webinar. This is a one way communication. I can't hear what you're speaking. You can't ask questions to me directly, so you have only one choice to ask question is uh, use the Q&A panel, which is on the right hand side. Uh, at the end of the training program, do give us your valuable feedback. It is very important for us to go go through all the feedback and do improvements in the next session. Yeah. So thank you very much, friends. It's happy learning. I wish you all um, all the best uh, and thank you for joining us. Now I'm going to go to our screen and I'm going to talk about Outlook. OK. So when we talk about Outlook, most of the people confuse Outlook with Outlook Express that used to come in earlier Windows version. Yeah, so that used to be Outlook Express and this version of when, uh, Outlook is called as MS Outlook or Microsoft Outlook. Well, now there is no Outlook Express. Uh, if you want to use Windows uh, inbuilt emailing system, then it is Windows Mail or just email. Yeah, just mail. Yeah, this is our Outlook, uh, which is nothing but MS Outlook, Microsoft Outlook, which is uh, which comes in different versions like Office 2007, 10, 13, 16, and the latest version is Office 365. Now, how, let me tell you how do you identify whether your Outlook version or MS Office version is Outlook 365 or not? See, Outlook 365 has got multiple version. One of the version does not support or, or few versions do not support uh, the desktop software. Like you have Word, Excel, PowerPoint. The 
corporate licenses like E1 and I think E5 license also has the same thing where these licenses, I could be wrong with the licensing name, but there are a few licenses. I'm sure about E5 license that does not provide desktop software. Yeah, so your software may not be Office 365 and you may not get the latest features. As you can see, my screen of Outlook is, is completely different and this is not the general outlook that you would get to see if it is not Office 365. So how will you identify whether your version of Office is Office 365 or not? You need to click on file and then you go to Office account. Yeah, if you're using Word, Excel or PowerPoint, it will be just account. So I repeat, if you click on file, you will see Office account and here you get to see the version of your Office. So I'm using Office 365 Pro Plus. This is one of the best or advanced software. Uh, there is nothing higher than this Office 365. Now this is nothing but the license or subscription product name that you're using, but the actual version is determined by this version number. If version number is 2004, that means this is one of the latest versions. You may have different series like 1809, 1803, 1709 or 1903, something like that. Those numbers only indicates that which version uh, the software is. Higher this number, the most advanced your software will be. In most of the corporates, what happens is uh, your IT department may not leave the uh, recent updates. They may not release updates because they may want to test the latest uh, update that Microsoft has released. They want to check within their own environment whether is it conflicting with anything else or not. So all these things needs to be done and that's the reason your IT department may not immediately release Microsoft updates. Well, there are a few organizations that I have seen they do release. So do check it out with your IT department uh, and and this this will tell you the monthly policy. Yeah. So uh, how does your software get updated? Whether is it going to get updated monthly, semi-annually, quarterly? This will tell you, yeah. So if it is semi-annually, that means it is going to be updated twice a year and you will have to get wait for six months. At the moment, Microsoft releases update every month. They release new features. And just in case, if you want to keep a track of new features, here is the option new, uh, what's new. I'm not getting into that. You can explore what's new, what are the new features. Now, when we come to Outlook here, I'm going to talk, start with emails. Yeah, when we talk about Outlook, most of the people, what do they do is they start the day with Outlook. They send and receive email. They send attachments. They send meeting requests or appointments. This is how they use their Outlook. Now, let me tell you how can we use Outlook to the best of our productivity. First thing on the left hand side, you will see that these are nothing but the folders that you have. Now here, when we talk about writing an email, so I can click here and I can start writing an email. Yeah, so uh, I can send, let's say I'm sending an email to Prashant and uh, this is CC, BCC and all those things you would know. Uh, let's say test I'm sending. Let's talk about the attachment. Now attachment, there is some improvement in Office 365 version or uh, this this attachment started from Office 2016. You get this attachment drop down and you see get to see all the recent files here. Now uh, it may happen that the file that you're looking at is not available here. So you go to browse this PC. This is something similar to what you've been doing. But here I would like to focus on this web location. Yeah, so uh, in, in, in the last three sessions, if you remember, we have learned about uh, creating Office SharePoint team site, Microsoft Teams, Planner and all those groups that we work with. Now, just in case the document that you're looking up for is not available on your system, but you remember that that was shared maybe on some team site or maybe on Microsoft Teams. How will you quickly locate without exiting Outlook? So this is the option that you have here. You can click on off browse web location and then go to group files. You may even go to SharePoint locations and you can look for uh, which SharePoint sites we have. Now here we have group files and when I talk about group files, it, this is the group that we have created. If you remember, this was the SharePoint group that we used in uh, planner as well as in uh, Microsoft Teams. So I click on 15 day webinar 
and here you will get to see all the files. If you remember when I was explaining Teams, that time I explained that your documents are not getting saved anywhere but SharePoint site. And when, when I was discussing about SharePoint, that time I mentioned that it is my understanding that I could be wrong with this understanding, but I strongly believe that this is the case that Microsoft initially came up with, which I'm sure that Microsoft initially came up with SharePoint services. And then slowly and gradually, they developed all these applications like uh, OneDrive kind of application, which is document library over there, announcement, which is Yammer. Um, there are a lot of uh, features uh, which uh, was there within SharePoint, but because people were not using it, what Microsoft did is they brought those features out of SharePoint and created independent applications like OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, Planner and stuff like that. Yeah. So here all your documents are stored in SharePoint. Even your OneDrive is connected to SharePoint. Yeah, it's nothing but a SharePoint site. So see here, this is the file that I would like to connect to my Outlook and I click on insert and uh, there are the two options. Do I want to share the link? If I'm sharing it with some internal person, then sharing the link would make sense. Otherwise, it is uh, always good to click on attach a copy. Now, when I attach a copy, the physical copy gets attached and I can send this file as an email. Yeah, so this was a simple thing about attachment. Second thing that I'm going to talk about is when we send email, we can go ahead and insert a lot of things like I can insert a business card or calendar. I can add signature and all those things that you are already comfortable with. Now, let me uh, share something. Uh, this is nothing but a screenshot. Yeah, it's a very simple thing. If I am somewhere on the screen, uh, let's say I would like to take this picture of uh, this Google. All I have to do is come here. Make sure that when I minimize the screen, my Google screen is visible. Uh, if I minimize the screen, Google should be visible. So I simply have to go to insert. Screenshot and I have these options. I can actually take the screenshots of the entire window, but if I do screen clipping, the screen minimizes and the, the screen at the background goes into clipping mode. I select the section and the moment I close it, it comes. Now let me tell you one good news about embedding pictures in Outlook. If you're using Office 365 and if your Outlook version is 1709 and later, then Microsoft is not going to reduce the resolution of your pictures. What does that statement mean is I have recently come across this article from Microsoft blog that earlier what Microsoft used to do is if you embed any picture within your email, Microsoft would reduce the resolution to 96 PPI that is DPI that is dots per inch something that stands for. Uh, that is the ideal resolution for email. So Microsoft used to reduce the resolution of your pictures. But now Microsoft has done that when you send an email, Microsoft Outlook is not going to reduce the quality of your picture. Yeah, earlier, if you want to maintain the quality, the best piece would be attach the email, attach the picture, don't embed the picture within the Outlook. Yeah, so that is the good news about Outlook now. Now, going ahead after insert, we have options. Now, there are plenty of things that we can do here within this options. Let me uh, show you certain couple of example. Who is I'm going to write an email to Prashant and I'm going to ask him what is he interested in, right? So I actually don't have uh, any other uh, audience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to in, add it to three or four people, but Prashant will respond to this email using voting button. Now what exactly is voting button? Let's say I want to ask these people about uh, which training would you, you like to take? Yeah. So I'm not writing any context. I have written in the subject line and I'm writing an email to all of them asking which training would you like to take? Question is one answers can be many. Some people might come up with any sort of training program, so I don't want to give them an option of choosing their own training. I want to give them few options and they should be choosing one of those options that I'm providing to them, not something of their choice. So I go to options here and I use voting button. Now here I have approved, reject, yes, no, yes, no, maybe. I go to custom and here 
I'm going to write the options. Let's say Excel. Now here I need to separate every option with a semicolon. Remember, it's not comma, it's semicolon. PPT Word Outlook. OK, so these are the options that I have given to them. And now I click on close. Now remember, there is a voting button here which says Excel, PPT, Word and Outlook. This message says you added voting button option. Now I'm going to send it to all. Now Prashant, when he receives the email, he is going to respond using the voting button. Remember here, it is very important to identify the voting button in a mail and then respond accordingly. Yeah, so let me tell you the scenario right now. I am in, in most of the companies. What happens is the HR department sends uh, the email uh, interest. How many of you are interested in uh, which training program? So uh, they have the laundry list and uh, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and they have only one day like next Monday. Which training would you all like to be a part of? So HR person gives four options. Now every person has to choose one of those four options. Now the problem is how does it work? in corporate world when HR sends an email, everyone will write their own responses in their own way. Some of the responses will be out of the box, right? Someone is uh, looking forward to attend rocket science training. Of course, your HR department cannot pro provide that. Yeah, so in such situation, what happens is uh, when everyone sends back the email, the person who has sent that email has to collate all the responses and create the chart. How many of them have responded? What training? and which training should be scheduled. So that takes a lot of man hours in collating the responses and then creating the summary. Now that I have created a voting button, what I need to do is since I have created a voting button, I'll go to send option. I'll open the same email that I had sent. And here you will see vote by clicking and here generally you get a tracking option. Yeah, so let me see if Prashant has responded to the training. Yeah, OK. Let me see which ID have I marked to Prashant. OK, that is the correct one. OK. Let me do it once again and uh, once again as in uh, let me refresh my mailbox. OK, now if this doesn't work, see what happens is unless and until I receive the response from Prashant, I will not be able to see the tracking information, but let me explain it to you irrespective whether do I see that or not. What I've done is I have sent the email, so I'll have to go back and uh, open the email that I've sent to Prashant and over here somewhere here. I'll get the option which is tracking when you click on that tracking option. See generally these things work, but uh, during the training when you need it urgently, the mail doesn't arrive and you do not get to see the tracking option. So when you get to see the tracking option there, you can see uh, how many people have responded. So uh, let's say I myself respond to this email like PPT and I say respond below. All right. So. Uh, OK, so uh, what I'm doing right now is. Uh, opening the email, not this one. Uh, this was the email. OK. So see here. When I click there, you see this option that says tracking. This is the message that comes up and you will see Pradeep Pradeshi. I think I have not received Prashant's email and that is the reason uh, I have not uh, been able to see the update. But anyways, it doesn't matter. What happened now right now is I have selected Pradeep Pradeshi and Pradeep has responded with PPT and here you get the total, which is uh, total. Uh, how many responses have I received? It says PPT one Excel zero Outlook zero and um, word zero. So here it will give you the statistics of all the messages that you have received and here individual responses. You can even copy and paste it in Outlook like this. You'll have to do control C and control V and it does work. OK, now what I'm going to do is now next thing is this tracking option is very useful friends. So let me uh, talk about the next thing. Here just now we spoke about tracking the messages using voting button. Next thing that I have here is when I go to Outlook, when I again go to options here, we have something called as request uh, receipt and delivery receipt. Okay, 
Now here, what happens if you check this? Let me show you something. If you check this and when you do not check this, what happens? I'm sending an email right now, but before that, just give me a moment. So I think uh, I received Prashant's message. OK. OK, let me once again go back and check if uh, the message that I had sent. OK, so now it got updated. See here. So total reply Excel one PPT one word zero and Outlook zero. So recently I have received Prashant's response and that is how I can track that thing. Anyways, so what I'm going to do now is next thing I am going to write an email without request delivery receipt and read receipt. OK, what exactly happens here? I'm writing an email to Prashant and. Okay. I'm writing an email to all these four people and what I'm doing right now is now see whenever I send an email, I'm very much interested in tracking how many people have read the email or how many people have received the email. So generally what happens if I check these two options and if I send an email. This is what happens. I will receive the. Email responses from every person. So do you see here? I quickly received four messages that email has been delivered. Yeah, delivery tracking. Now this is this can be a concern for me that uh, uh, if I receive keep receiving such emails, it will clutter my inbox. So now what I can do is now this is applicable for all the tracking information. Now tracking information. What kind of tracking information do we receive? First, let me explain and then I'll tell you about the solution. The first tracking information is of voting button. When you send a voting button, you receive a tracking information who has responded what that is one uh, information. Second information is delivery receipt and read receipt. These are the two tracking information. Third tracking information is who has accepted your meeting request, who has not accepted your meeting request and all those stuff. Yeah, so these are the tracking information that you would need that you receive all the time. Now few people find it very in useful because they would want to track the people who are responding to their information or their mails. So what do we do here in order to stop this tracking information to be displayed in the inbox? I go to click here and I go to the option that is options. And when I click on options here, I go to mail. And when I go to mail here, I see the option which says. Delivery receipt and read receipt, right? If you check these two options by default, every mail that you send. This tracking options will be enabled for for those emails that you send out. I would recommend not to check this because even recipients might not like you sending the tracking emails every time whether have they received it or not has those mails got delivered or not. For exceptional mails only use this service. That is my recommendation. It's your choice whether you want to turn it on for all the emails. But even if you do it or not, I would recommend that you check this box. Yeah, but check this box only if you have understood this concept properly, because if you don't receive the, those tra tracking information like you have sent an email to 10 people and how many of them have accepted or rejected? How would you come to know if you delete that emails those emails, right? So that is a very important information. So you need to understand the entire concept in order to be able to check this decide whether you want to check it or not. So I'm checking it for now and now next email that I'm going to send to all of them once again is I have added their email addresses and I'm saying tracking delete email. And this time once again, I'm checking these two boxes. Yeah, now I click on send. After having sent those tracking information last time, you would have seen that immediately these four tracking information got updated on my screen. Yeah, just now it got updated, but quickly it got deleted. So all those tracking information got deleted. Now I would like to see whether how many of these people have read the email or have not read the email. So I select this option which says tracking delete. And do you see this icon? That means the tracking information has been enabled for this particular email. Yeah, now 
what I'm going to do is I will click here, double click on this particular option, and I'll again go to this tra tracking information. So see, if you delete those information, then the only source of tracking those information is clicking on that tracking. And see, these are the people who have received those email and none of them have read that email as yet. Yeah, none of them uh, have read the email as yet. And you can see the total delivered uh, is to four participant. Understood? So this is how you go ahead and uh, make use of the tracking information that you send out. Now this, these informations are very important because let's say you are going to send an urgent and important email to someone and you need to get the confirmation whether has that person uh, received the email or not. And second, has that person read the email or not? But again, it is the discretion of the person to send you the read receipt or not. Because the moment they read the information and they try to move out of those emails, a screen will pop up. Do you want to update it to the sender? And if they say deny, then you will not re get, receive the read receipt, but you will surely get the delivery receipt. Yeah. So understand that tracking information is extremely important. OK. Now the second thing here is a very important uh, feature, which is delay delivery. When you talk about delay delivery, that means here you can select when a particular email is going to be delivered. So let's say I want an email to be delivered at OK today. And I am selecting 1130 PM. I would like to tell my boss that I'm working till 1130 in the night and after working at 11 by till 1130, I've been able to complete the report and send it across to him. Now here, if you choose this option. After choosing this option, you need to close, write the name of the recipient and uh, compose the email and delay delivery. OK, so what I've done is I have selected 1130 PM and I'm click clicking on send. Now what will happen? This email will stay in my outbox till the time the triggering time is arrived. Once that is passed, automatically this email will leave my outbox. In order to be able to use this feature, few things that you need to remember, you cannot close your Outlook. And your Outlook should be connected with the internet connection. So let's say if you close the Outlook, this email will not be sent because this is not a server feature. This is the Outlook client feature. So if you close the Outlook or you shut down your laptop or internet connection is missing, it won't be sent. It will be sent after the time has passed whenever you are uh, connected to the internet at that point of time, this email will be sent to everyone. OK, so friends, these were basic features of uh, uh, Outlook emails that you can use. Now next I'm going to talk about searching emails and managing emails, which is going to be very important. But before that, let me take up a few questions. OK, how to reflect to do in calendar? OK, I'm going to talk about that to do thing uh, in a short while. When I face the issue that I do not find my old emails more than three months. OK, uh, let me tell you that there are few organizations who delete their email. So there, that is the IT policy of most of the organizations that uh, OK, by the way, I have deleted this email. This is not gone from my outbox. Don't get confused. OK, so actually this is an IT policy. A couple of organizations that I've seen that emails automatically get deleted from their outbox. So what do they do is they either archive those emails. I'm going to talk about archiving emails or they copy and paste the email into some folder. OK, can we attach the minute video while sending the minutes of meeting to send email through Outlook? OK, let me tell you that we can send anything along with that email as long as that is there uh, available with us. So if you're talking from the context of Outlook that can we send video in email? Then in OneNote you can record the video, but it can't be sent as an attachment. You have to um, export it and then uh, send it as an attachment as long as the attachment size is within the limit of uh, the IT policy limits. In my PC, MS Office version is uh, standard 2016. Can we use all benefits or needs to update it? 
most of the uh, features in outlook are available in outlook 2016 also so if you are only using outlook my recommendation is stick to it but if you are using excel and powerpoint then in coming session you will get to know some stunning feature which are not there in ms office 2016 Okay, I have archived all my emails, but uh, now I cannot find them. So I'm going to talk about the search right now. That is going to talk about this feature. Can we delete send emails from receivers inbox if that email is sent by mistake? Yes, yes, that's a very good feature. So let me start with that feature, and then I'm going to talk about the next uh, feature. How can we import contacts from browser, mail, or Outlook? Okay, that's a different feature. Mail thing, I won't be talk uh, able to talk about, but I can talk about um, managing contacts, exporting and importing contacts in Outlook. Okay, can we export these tracking result to Excel? Yes, you can copy and paste the tracking result just the way I have uh, shared. Can we make voting button use multiple choice voting? No, at the moment only one option is there, and if you are looking for multiple choice and all those options. i would recommend that uh, uh, use microsoft forms for that okay requesting to throw light on using folder and sorting emails in outlook i'm going to talk about that right now okay so let me start with a question that one user has asked can we recall the messages okay so let us take an example i'm sending an email to two people yeah first email is going to go to prashant and second email is going to go to shweta i am sending email for recall okay now what i'm going to do is when i send this email prashant will read this email right now and shweta won't receive the email so let me before i go ahead and tell you the steps to recall the email let me tell you the conditions in which you can recall an email and the conditions in which you cannot recall an email let us take an example you have sent an email to 10 people out of them few people are using the private email boxes like gmail or outlook or redif mail or yahoo that is one set of people second set of people is internal people who are uh, using the same exchange server yeah now third is external people again corporate who are using exchange server okay so these are the three set of people first set of people if you send an email to them you cannot recall first set of people were gmail yahoo outlook users outlook.com i mean yeah if you send an email to them you cannot retrieve the email second if you are sending it to internal people you will be able to most of the time recall the emails third case is if you are sending it to the outsider who has who are again using microsoft exchange then it depends on their company's it policy whether should a person from outside the organization be able to recall such messages or not in their exchange server this it policy is there if they enable it you will be able to recall if they disable it you will not be able to recall yeah now uh, one more set of user that is coming to my mind that is uh, the corporate google suite user google suite or any other third party email service user now i'm taking an example of google suite but it applies to other uh, web based email services as well uh, which are not uh, standard one like rocket email or something now these email services provide pop access pop access means the mails get downloaded onto the system uh, as a local copy in such cases also you won't be able to re recall the email so in simple you can recall the emails from the internal let let me give you make it simple you, if you send it to few people within your organization you'll be able to recall but again there is a condition to that that if a person let's say uh, there are two people one has read your email the other person has not read your email you will be able to recall the email recalling means it gets deleted from the recipient's mailbox of the person who has not read the email but if the person has read the email that email cannot be recalled okay so what i'm going to do is i go to sent items and now i go to the email that i have just now sent which is uh, recall i click here okay uh, this is sent yeah i open the email that i have sent and there are two ways i can click here which is action this is called as action and i can select the option recall this message or i can go to file and here i have the option resend or recall 
and now I click on recall this message. When I click on recall this message, it says delete 100 copies of this message or delete 100 copies and replace with a new message. So let's say you want to replace the current message. You can do that or else it will just delete the message. So I can click on the option and it said you try to recall the message and I'll get the information whether the recall is successful or not. So um, I won't wait for that message. It will come and uh, I will get notified. Yeah, so in amongst these two people, Prashant has read the email and uh, Shweta has not read the email. So I won't be able to recall or delete Prashant's email, but I will be able to delete Shweta's email. OK, now next thing. Let's talk about search. Now friends, search thing uh, that is something which is very unique and important, but uh, let me tell you my screen will be different than the people those who are using Office 2016. OK, so let me tell you how do you search and what is so important about search to search. Most of the people think that they click here uh, when they get the search box, they type in the query and they get the result. It's not about find being able to find the result or not, but how quickly can you find the result that matters a lot. So here what I'm going to do is I have the search bar here. But generally Office 2010, 13 and 16 users will have the search bar right here at the top. Yeah, the moment they click on the search, uh, automatically a search bar gets activated like this. A search bar gets activated. Remember this part that when you click on the search bar, which is here at the top, if you're using Office 2010, 13, 16, all these three versions have a search bar right here. When you click on that search bar here, the search tab will get activated. Yeah, on my screen you will not get the further option, but here when you you you'll get to see a green plus icon. When you get to see that green plus icon which says more, click on that and you will get the list. Right? See, uh, I am I have to do it again and again because my screen does not support that uh, that feature. That feature is in that that screen. Uh, my screen is slightly different. So when you click on more here, you will get the option like from to subject attachment attachment contains. You want to select all those options. Yeah, so first you say click on file from then you click on more to then you click on more subject again. Click on more attachment attachment contains. So generally I recommend these five options or these five filters from that means who has sent the email to to whom it was sent. Third subject. Fourth attachment, whether that mail contain an attachment or not. Fifth, what that attachment was. Now see what you can do with these options. Once you activate these filters, now these filters are going to stay there. It's not that when you move out of the screen or you close out, look, these filters will be wiped out. It doesn't happen that way. These filters are going to stay there on your screen. When you click here, you you get this small drop down. A drop down comes automatically like this the way it is appearing on my screen. All you have to do now is click on from. Let's say I talk about Prashant to say Pradeep. That is to me which contain an attachment. Yes, so now if I click on search, See automatically it has quickly given me all the emails that Prashant has sent to me with this attachment. I can even name the attachment uh, like uh, feedback. Let's say I, I talk about feedback or Excel automatically it will search that as well. See here it will automatically remove certain emails which does not contain the word feedback. Yeah, so automatically see it has removed the previous result and it has given me only feedback. So understand this particular filter is extremely helpful for searching emails in our mailboxes. I have seen many people doing plenty of things uh, to be able to get this search uh, thing. They spend a lot of time in locating any particular email. So always keep these filters activated. I repeat how do we activate these filters by just going to uh, the search bar you get the search tab automatically uh, added up. Once you get that search bar here, you need to click on more and keep adding these filters 
and once you add those filters, those filters are going to stay there. It doesn't get removed when you close Outlook or move out, out of that window. OK, now next thing that I'm going to talk about, this is how you will work with search. Yeah, now one person asked me that uh, he wants to search on PST and other connected uh, Outlook items as well. So after adding the filters here, I would recommend that go to this all Outlook items. So wherever, whatever item that are connected, which are connected right now, no matter you are using multiple account, no matter you have got 10 P P PSTs uh, connected to your Outlook, everywhere Outlook will search and will bring the result in front of you. Okay, so make sure that you go ahead and uh, try this. One more thing I have seen many people, uh, they complain that their uh, search result takes very long time. Yeah, few of these things I'm going to explain in Windows training program when I'm going to talk about Windows. Uh, that is, I think, day after tomorrow. In that thing, I'm going to talk about search in detail, but for now, I'm going to talk about one Windows utility which is going to help you to increase the speed of your Outlook, which is indexing. Yeah, when you go to indexing here, when you, you need to ensure that Outlook is connected here. If Outlook is not connected, you need to check Outlook here. Yeah, so check this Outlook. What do you need to do is, I, I went little fast, so let me explain it again. You go to start, type index, you get this indexing options. Start index, you get this indexing options. When you go to that indexing options here, you need to click on modify and ensure Outlook is selected in this. If Outlook is not selected, it is likely to search slow. Yeah, so make sure Outlook uh, should be selected in order to be able to do fast searching in Outlook. Next thing, let's say I generally would like to see the email, all the unread emails. Yeah, now I don't want to move emails. See, I've got 578 unread emails and 152 emails have been deleted, okay? So uh, I would like to see um, all the unread emails in one mailbox. Generally what happens in our cases, uh, we have multiple folders, like I have multiple folders, and within those multiple folders, we have several emails, yeah? I would like to see all the unread emails in one particular box at the same time. I'm not here. I'm not talking about filtering those emails because filtering will take time. What I'm saying is I would like to see the emails in one simple box. What I can do is I can go to folder and there is something called a search folder. OK, when you talk about search folder, search folders are generally at the bottom of your screen. Here there are some search folders. Yeah, these are search folders like I click on unread email and all the unread emails will be visible to me on this one particular folder. At the same time, understand the search folder concept. These emails are there in the respective boxes or folders, but a copy of that email is visible here. Now, when I'm saying copy, it does not actually copy the email into this. It's just that it is a collective folder which shows all the unread emails over here. And the moment you read those emails, the, the count of those emails will be reduced one after the other getting it so this is how the unread folder works now what is so important about this unread email folder because that's already there now see this search folder is also unique to search on based on different criteria let us say i would like to search emails from specific people yeah now uh, let's say you have kept your Let's say you receive a lot of emails from your boss and according to the context of that email, you put them in respective folder. One fine day, you are looking for all the emails that you have not read, which are scattered in multiple folders. Yeah, you wanted to read them, but because those were a little low on priority, you did not look at them. Now you want to look all, at all the emails that you have received from your boss. What will you do? You will simply click here. Go to choose, select the email ID. Let's say I choose the email ID of Prashant. And I click OK. Yeah. Now I click OK again. 
here you will see one folder has got created which is prashant and here it gives you all the emails that i have received from prashant okay now here once again let me go to customize search folder and uh, i go to browse here okay anyways uh, one thing i forgot that these are not the unread emails that i have done okay so let me do it again when i go to search folder click on create a custom search folder here i can click okay sorry i'll name it as uh, unread from boss okay so i i by mistake selected that option from specific people but i'm creating custom search folder because i am looking forward to see the emails from prashant yeah which uh, which are unread so what i'm going to do is i've created custom search folder i gave the name now here is the option for criteria now first thing that i'm going to do is from i'll select from prashant and i click okay second thing i go to more choices and i select only items that are unread now this is custom search folder where i am giving the criteria and based on that criteria it is now going to search the email so i click okay and the then it says browse which folder do you want to search i would like to search from let's say only inbox not from the entire outlook so click okay and okay and okay once again so see here all the unread emails from prashant are available here yeah let me uh, do this once again because i'm sure a few of you might have got confused because i did a mistake in one step you need to go here new search folder you need to come here and select the option create a custom search folder and select the name of the person then click on criteria type who do you want to uh, who, whose email do you, do you want to filter and then go to more choices and click on only items that are unread correct so this particular feature is going to help you to get this custom search folder one few custom search folders will be already available here but you can create your own custom search folders as well now that i have created two custom search folder one is from boss and one is from prashant let me delete this delete folder and see are you sure you want to permanently delete these items contains will not be deleted so that's a very good thing about it if you delete these custom search folders the emails that belongs to them will not be deleted so remember the emails are not there in those custom search folder it's there in the respective folders okay okay so friends uh, here uh, we were to talk about mails the next thing i'm going to talk about calendar so here is my inbox yeah okay so pst and all those things i'll talk about in a while from now but just give me some time i'll come to pst when you talk about calendar calendar is a very important thing and uh, here generally sending and receiving email or meeting invite is a very common thing yeah so i'm not going to talk about that i'm just going to talk about how ideally should you create a meeting okay anyways i will quickly talk about this email that i have sent to prashant and other team members okay now what i want to do is i quickly would like to do a meeting with all of them so how can i start a meeting request i click on that particular email that uh, is having the conversation of uh, any particular instance or topic let's say i was talking about some project and these four people are involved and i quickly want to send a me meeting invite to them so usually i've seen people they go to here and click on appointment or meeting and then they add individually every person's email and then they send meeting invite let's see how can you easily do it you click here and click go to this option home and reply with meeting this is the option here the moment i click over there automatically will see that all the people those who are marked in that conversation are available here and all i have to do is set the context and uh, previous context is already set if i want to write something i can do it 
now the problem is now i do not know how many of these people are available for the meeting and how many of them are not available so how do i find out we have something which is very interesting which is called a scheduling assistant when i talk about scheduling assistant you can see easily that today this is the schedule of pradeep and prashant and harshita and shweta all these four people are blocked yogesh is free all the time and uh, sorry this is non working hour and they are still working yeah now uh, i can even go to another date and see how is their schedule so 21st seems to be um, only busy with pradeep and uh, prashant but 21st throughout the day i see that all of them are free yeah sorry i am here so all of them seems to be free so let me schedule a meeting between 3 to 4:30 pm now if i select let's take an example i select this slot yeah now here you will see that some meetings are getting conflicted so that is that may not be the right time uh, it will also give you the suggestion when what is the best time so best time to do the meeting is 8 am to 10:30 pm that is the best time for this much duration see 8 am to 10:30 that is 2 and 1/2 hours throughout the day 2 and 1/2 hours i may not be available yeah that is the reason it has chosen 8 am to 10:30 pm it automatically gives me the suggestion and otherwise it shows that there is one conflict and pradeep pardeshi may not be available for that meeting so scheduling assistance is a very important feature to find out who amongst all these people are available and second thing you can go back to meeting request if you think a uh, meeting request is meeting uh, time is set you can simply go ahead and send the email yeah yesterday someone spoke to me uh, how do we find out how many of these people have accepted or rejected again when they accept or reject we get the tracking let's say i'm sending the meeting request right now and i am going to ask them to respond to the meeting request once they respond to the meeting request all i have to do is just check how many of them have responded so i come here and i have selected the duration tomorrow right so 8 am to 10:30 pm yeah now see here generally in previous version of outlook what used to happen and what is happening right now see here i have sent meeting responses and you will see one person has accepted and others have not accepted generally this information used to be available here in tracking but now in office 365 they have created a separate tab of tracking and you can find out out of these people who has accepted the meeting and who all have not accepted the meeting you getting what i'm saying here what exactly happens this tracking information that tracking tab that you're getting here used to be available somewhere here in office 2013 and 16 but now they have created a separate tab of tracking which will help you to find out how many of these people have accepted the meeting and these information can be easily seen uh, without going into tracking also you can see them over here right here on the screen yeah so this is how you can find out how many of these people have uh, accepted the meeting and have not accepted the meeting now friends uh, there is one more feature that i'm going to talk about which is rules and alert creating rules when you want to create some rules and there is one more feature about managing pst that i'm going to talk about so first thing is rules and alerts so uh, when you go to home tab here i have rules and i can go ahead and click on the option manage rules and alert now let me tell you what is this rules rules means you receive an email from a particular person and you want to put them up in in a particular folder or you want some action to happen when you receive an email from so and so person all right so let me talk about one person who is sending an email from a specific email id if he sends email important and urgent it should be sent to someone if he does not use important and urgent it should not be sent to anyone 
but it should be stored in one particular folder. Yeah. So let's easier way of using creating rules is using these three options. Um, these options as well as create rule. I will suggest that you explore this option. I'm going to start with manage rules and alert. When you talk about manage rules and alert, I have created these rules. Organize the mails in specific folder or specific uh, action to be taken. So first thing is I'm creating rule. First, when I click on rule, here it is asking me that this rule should be app uh, should apply on the messages that you receive. That means on on your inbox or apply rule on messages you send or I send. You also need to choose the folder where is it going to be applied. So I click here rules and manage rules and alert. I click here and now what I'm doing is let me create the rule from scratch. So these rules has got three step. First step is to identify which mails to be used to apply rules. So I have to give the conditions as it says which condition you want to check. So the conditions could be many. So here there are specific conditions that are given. I would recommend that you go through all these conditions once so that you understand what are the possibilities, what all kind of mails can be tracked. So I check with a specific word as well as through a specified account. So what I'm doing is with a specific word in the subject through the specified account. Now earlier it used to be like this people or public group. This this term used to be different, but now they have changed it. Microsoft has keeps changing their uh, lot of features within MS Office. So I've selected these two. First thing is with word specific word. Now what those words should be whenever you see something in blue color, you click there and you type the words that should be applied or to be used to filter the email. So let's say urgent important. Right, so I click if the mail subject has these two words urgent or important. I click OK. Then and also there is one more condition through a specified account. So someone must have sent the email. OK, specified account I think uh, sent to with specific word. Which option did I choose here? Sorry, my mistake here. I by mistake selected on the rules that messages that I send. Actually, it should be rules where I receive. Um, that is the reason it was uh, giving that particular problem. Yeah, this is uh, the perfect screen. So here it says from a from people of public group. So who those people are? Let's say Prashant. When Prashant sends an email to me. With a specific word and the specific word will be. Important. Urgent. Right. Whenever he sends an email with these two words in the subject. What should happen? That means now what action should be taken? I would like it to be moved to a specific folder and I want to forward it to someone. So whenever I choose any option, if there is something written in blue color, that means that is nothing but fill in, fill in the blank. So I would like it to be forwarded to let's say Harshita. I click OK. And it should be moved to a specific folder. So I want to create a folder. Let's say new folder. Urgent. OK, so I've created a folder urgent and OK. So whenever Prashant sends an email with important urgent, it should be forwarded to Harshita and it should be moved to urgent. Yeah, the so first case was to identify what email second screen was to do the action and the third one is for exception. Right now what exception are there any exceptions? Let's say if the email is. Uh, email where I am in CC. Right where my name is in CC. So let's say Prashant has sent an email, but he has kept me in CC. So that mail is not for me for someone else, but it is urgent. So let that person take care of it. If the mail is marked to me, I'm in the two box. Then it should be forwarded to Harshita because if it is urgent, if I'm not able to take care of that email, at least she should be able to address the uh, email. Yeah, so. 
first one is identification second one is action and the third one is exception these are the three rules it is based on and i will check run this rule now if i check this rule uh, option it will run if i don't check it won't run and i can give the name so i'm not saving this rule right now but what will happen whenever prashant does any kind of this activity i will receive the email and proper action will be taken on that email yeah since i'm talking about managing email let me talk about one more feature here uh, which will be very important for most of you okay now i want uh, okay can you see the emails that look little different in color identify these two email now what is the context let me make you understand the context and then i'll tell you how is it done most of the people have told me monday morning they received lot of emails now when they receive emails it becomes very difficult for them to filter what are the important emails that they should open and what are the emails they do not want to open immediately maybe they want to keep it for later purpose now what exactly happens here they receive all the emails in the same color and they are not able to identify what are the important email now generally important emails the definition vary from person to person but there's one common uh, the two common definition if the email has arrived from boss that could be important and second thing if they are marked in two that is important so if the email has arrived from boss i'm not discussing that that you can uh, use filter or uh, you can use search folders but i'm now talking about how can i make sure that the emails where i am marked in two i should be able to recognize those emails without even opening those emails yeah so if i marked in two it should look in different color if i marked in cc or bcc the email should look differently so that i can identify and i can decide whether should i open that email or not right now so let's see how do we go about doing it so what i'm going to do is i click here view and i go to view setting yeah so the steps are exactly the same in 2010 13 16 when you go to view view settings now here you have something which is called as conditional formatting friends you must have heard about conditional formatting in excel but there is something uh, conditional formatting available in word as well so here i have something which is called as conditional formatting when i click on conditional formatting here you can click on add i've already added a, a particular email and i've made it two yeah now here you will see something called as untitled you can give some information some inputs here untitled as or name then you can go to font when you go to font here what you need to do is Uh, you can click on bold and you can choose the font how should that look like i do not choose any other font i would like to keep it simple just the bold letter there are certain colors i would recommend not to choose green uh, blue or red because blue is generally for uh, unread emails red is for expired events or your oh, sorry overdue tasks and tasks and green is for expired uh, messages so i would suggest you can choose anything like purple navy maroon sorry maroon and there are different colors so i have chosen um, i think i have chosen purple color yeah so let me change the color now to maroon right now and now i go to okay so here i have defined what should be the color of those emails now i'm going ahead with condition when i click on condition i have chosen two important condition now friends this is once again the same email, uh, screen that we have just now seen in search folder so this filter screen comes up and i'll check this box that says on the two line with other people yeah understand what i'm doing here i have selected where i'm on the two line with other people because i'll get three options here the only person on the two line on the two line with other people and for cc with other people yeah so i have selected on the two line with other people then i go to more choices and check the box that says items that are unread when i select that i click okay okay and okay yeah so now uh, all the emails where i am marked in two is in maroon color and other emails where i am marked in cc or some other uh, options i am you will see the color in different blue color 
OK. Now, friends, one last thing and then I'll wrap up uh, about the PST files. So by the way, let me tell you why am I switching the account to another account? Because when you talk about Office 365 account, generally you don't need to archive emails. I'm not saying you should not archive emails, but generally you don't need to archive emails. So what you can do here is uh, because uh, Office 365 gives you uh, 100 GB of mailbox, which is pretty big, so you don't need to archive, but still at times you may want to. So there are different ways to do archive setting. So you need to go to file. Options advanced here you get the option auto archive setting. When you go to auto archive setting here, you need to select how many when those uh, your email should get archived. I have selected 14 days. That is the normal thing and uh, these are the normal options and here it is asking you where should the archive PST be kept. So what I'm doing right now is I'm managing PST. So all the emails, older emails will automatically be moved to archive folder, which are six, day, six months and above older email, right? Now, when you see archive one.pst, let me show you one thing that at the moment I don't have any archive folder for this account. So uh, I go to uh, account settings account and here data file. See here when I go to for, uh, open file location here I have PST but there is no archive PST here. So let's see how does that archive PST get created by this feature that I'm going to talk about. You can go to file. Options. And. Uh, advanced. And here it is auto archive setting. When you click on run auto archive, I click on run auto archive. And here uh, this is cre going to create uh, documents folder. It is going to create an archive one PST. I click on OK. And OK. When you run the archive automatically, the archive folder gets created. Now see immediately it may not create the archive folder. But what will happen? Uh, I have set the time that within 14 days it will automatically create the archive folder and it will create a new PST for you. OK, so that is how the archive happens. Now uh, one uh, last feature that feature is the delegate feature. Let's take an example. You're going on leave and you would want to give the access to your emails. Without giving out your username and password, you're within an organization. You're, you want to give the access to your mails to your secretary or to your colleague, but you don't want to share the password. So what you need to do is there is a feature which is called as delegate access. You need to go to file. Here is the option account setting. There is an option delegate. Yeah, when you go to delegate, you can give the delegate access to any person. Uh, Let's say I would like to give the delegate access to Prashant right now so that he can check my emails in my absence if I do not check uh, my emails or if I'm on leave. So what I did, what did I do was account setting delegate access and here I want Prashant to review my calendar, but he should not be able to see my task, but he should be able to create and modify my emails. I want to give him my email access as well as calendar access. Yeah, now I would want him to get all these uh, information in an email. Yeah, so what I've done is I have given the access to him and I click OK and I click OK. Now what will happen when Prashant receives that email, he will get to know that I have given him the delegate access. So see this freezing of the screen is common when you give the delegate access. Now the next thing is. Likewise, Prashant also has given me the access to his account, which is nothing but delegate access. Yeah. Now, how do we check either each other's account now? So since he has given me the delegate access and I would want to uh, take a look at his emails without him sharing the password. So I go to file. I select the option open and export. And then I click on open other users folder. When I click on open other users folder here, the screen comes up. If I don't choose the name properly or if I don't choose the folder type properly, it is not going to give me 
the access. Let's say if I choose someone else, it will certainly not give me the access or Prashant has not given me the access to his tasks. Yeah, so if I click on task, it will give me the error. Prashant has given me the access to his calendar. OK, let me check his calendar right now. So I click on calendar. Uh, added it can take few minutes for new calendars to appear in your calendar list. OK, see recently we have done this setting, so it might take up some time to appear uh, his calendar, but uh, uh, email uh, is something that uh, we generally do. Otherwise, calendar access is very much normal. So like I said, uh, it is taking some time because we have just now given the access to each other and it takes a little while. But I hope you understand how do we give delegate access file account setting delegate. Yeah, now once I am done with the access, I would like to revoke the access. So I click here and remove it. Or if I want to change the access, I can go to permission and I can change the access as well. Yeah. Second, if I want to see the other person's account, I'll go to open and export and go to other users folder. So this delegate access within an organization is very useful because this is how you can go ahead and uh, give the access to someone as well as you can get the access from people. Yeah. So friends, uh, this is how we go ahead and uh, work with Outlook. There are a lot of things that I would want. Uh, I wanted to cover. I had actually scheduled more topics than that can fit in one hour. So let me take a few questions before I move on. Uh, so uh, I'll quickly take up two to three questions and then we'll wrap up this session. So how to create group? OK, so let me quickly talk about the groups in calendar. OK, uh, you're talking about groups in uh, Outlook so creating group is very simple. You can go to contacts and click on new contact group. One more group uh, can be created in SharePoint, can be created in Teams and all those things that you can use here. Yeah, like if you remember, we have created 15 days webinar. So I type 15. And press control. Yeah, this is 15 day webinar. If you remember, this group was created when I was doing the SharePoint training. So the group which was created in SharePoint that can also be used in Outlook. How can we pin emails like uh, WhatsApp? We cannot pin the emails, but what you can do is you can come here and you can certainly flag the emails which come to this to do list. If I trigger an email to be sent at 1130 and close my laptop, but I have the same Outlook installed on my mobile. Sorry, it doesn't work. This is not a server feature. It doesn't work on your mobile. If I need to send some email multiple times say monthly, is there any option to trigger mails every month, say first of every month? Yes, there is an option to uh, schedule emails, but that feature is not there in Outlook. But let me tell you, there is a feature which I did not cover while doing your Office 365 training program. Maybe tomorrow I will cover this uh, Power Automate feature. Uh, there is a feature Power Automate where you can schedule emails, email frequency, and uh, see here I click on create and here there are four options automated flow. Then schedule flow, so you will choose a schedule flow and at a particular schedule you can trigger some actions, right? So it is uh, a different thing that you can do using schedule flow. Yeah, so how do we attach PDF file as notice or information on the mail body? You can just go to uh, in order to attach PDF in the mail body, you can go ahead, go to insert and use this object. Yeah, use this object. Don't use attachment. How can we convert PST of other person to OST? OK, you have to import PST to make it OST. Yeah, so I'm, I won't be able to tell you the details about it. OK, there is how do we create subfolders to the group and incoming mails? Uh, you can use uh, the roles part to create uh, folders and uh, automatically send emails to those uh, folders. OK, so friends, there are plenty of questions uh, over here. I will check up those questions and I'll see if some of those questions can be answered in our email. So at the moment, it will be it will not be possible for me to uh, take up uh, any further questions because I have a meeting starting at seven and I'm already running late on that. So Prashant is going to uh, give you the feedback link. Please fill the feedback and give your notes whether how did I what, what all things did I do good? What all things need an improve, improvement? 
uh, one constant suggestion that I've been getting is to slow down the pace a little bit. But let me tell you, only few people are saying that. Uh, and and I'm reluctant to do that because if I do that, I'll be um, I'll have to cover less number of topics for, uh, in order to accommodate that request, which I think you can refer to our YouTube videos and our YouTube videos are available on this link that is uh, uh, tiny URL uh, slash 15 day webinar or else this is my YouTube channel link. Yeah, so if you've liked this session, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel and do leave any comment on LinkedIn. And one more thing, please go ahead and make some donation towards PM Care or any other organization that you are associated with. Make sure do, you do it today because tomorrow never comes. So that's it, friends. I would like to uh, sign off from here. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. And uh, Prashant is going to send the feedback form. Please do fill the feedback. He has already sent it. Thank you very much, friends.